الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليذكره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم اللهم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لسان يفقه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم أنس وحشتنا في قبولنا وارحمنا بالقرآن العظيم وجعله لنا إماما ونورا وهدى ورحمة آمين يا رب العالمين So my dear respected brothers and sisters I've just recited to you a surah from the Quran that I'm sure all of you know by heart even the children, the adults, and everyone in between, men and women, brothers and sisters. This is because it is one of the shortest surahs in the Qur'an. In the Qur'an there are three surahs with three ayats, and this is one of them. It's Surah Al-Asr. And although it is one of the shortest surahs in the Qur'an, it is yet one of the most comprehensive. Jamia. One of my teachers who taught me the Quran, he based an entire course of study on this one surah. That if you can understand what's happening right here, it'll give you a comprehensive understanding of your deen and also of the obligations that you have in this deen. Faraj the deen ka jamit tasawwur, he called it, Dr. Isar Ahmed. May Allah have mercy on him. <clears throat> he also called it Sahal Mumtani. Because on, on the surface, the easy impossible. Because on the surface, it's very simple. And in fact, if you're somebody who can speak and understand Urdu, most of the words are easy to understand, even if you don't know Arabic. Wal Asr, Inna linsana lafi khusr, illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. You need to know maybe just a little bit of explanation. But on the surface, the words are very easy to understand. But the meanings are deep. And it is reported that Imam al-Shafi'i rahimullah said, ponder over this surah. To the point that, if you think just about this surah, لَوْ تَدَبَّرَ النَّاسُ هَذِهِ surah. If you just, if human beings were to think just about this surah, it would be sufficient for your guidance. Dive deep, deep into it. There's also a report that comes, is reported on the authority of Tawarani, that when two companions among the companions of the Prophet ﷺ would meet, كَانَ رَجُلَانِ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّبِي إذا التقيا, When they would meet, لَمْ يَتَفَرَّقَ They wouldn't part each other. حَتَّى يَقْرَأَ أَحَدُهُمَا عَلَى الْآخِرِ Surah Al-Asr And this is why when we often sit in gatherings and if they're gatherings with learned people you will notice that before anything they might say a few words like سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ وَبِهَمْدِكَ نَشْهَدُ وَاللَّا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْ نَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَنْتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ These are reports that we have of what you should recite when a gathering is concluding but also they will recite Surah Al-Asr. It's because of this. Because the companions 
would remind each other before they left of this surah. And today, we're going to think about all these things, inshallah, in the time that we have. So we'll begin, that was just a brief introduction. We'll begin, um, I'll put forward some different translations in English, because the word asr has been translated differently. And that's because people have read different meanings into it. And all of these go back to authentic reports and traditions. There's more than one way to think about something. Um, then we'll discuss some of the meanings. Um, then I'll point out some, some a thematic aspect of the surah. Because where it comes in the Quran, before it and after it, are very interesting surahs, surahs that help us really under, understand what's happening right in the middle. If we have time, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the relationship of sound and rhyme to meaning. Okay, so Surah Al-Asr, Wal Asr, that's the first ayah, Wal Asr, the second ayah, Inna al-insana lafi khusr, Wal Asr, Inna al-insana lafi khusr, and the third ayah, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ So already you notice a kind of asymmetry. The first ayah is short, the second just a little bit longer, and the third one not just a little bit longer than that, but much longer. Although they all end in a rhyme. Asr, Khusr, and Sabr. Okay, what does it mean? Wal Asr, this is Wa'af Qasm, by time. So I have four translations I picked. The Sahih International comes out of Saudi Arabia. Abdullah Yusuf Ali, Marmaduke Iqfal, and Abdul Halim. And you can go further and, and and look at even more. I had a lot more when I was when I was looking, but I picked these ones. So the Sahih International one says, by time. Well ask, by time. So they are asr, as in time. And the Arabs have different words for time. Waqt, dahar. So here's a particular kind of time. Abdullah Yusuf Ali says, By the token of time through the ages. A kind of historical time. By the token of time through the ages. Pickfall says, by the declining day. By the declining day. It's very interesting. Obviously, you know Salat al-Asr is the same word, the mid-afternoon prayer. And so, he picked, going off of that, by the declining day. And Abdul Halim went the same way, but he adds, I swear, to make the oath explicit, not just by. Well, Asr, I swear, by the declining day. Indeed, mankind is in loss. Indeed, mankind is in loss. And there are several modes of emphasis employed in the Arabic. In Lafi Khusrin. Indeed, this is why the translators, indeed, verily, surely, mankind, all human beings, are in loss. Abdullah Yusuf Ali says, verily, man is in loss. Big Paul says, lo, man is in a state of loss. And Abdul Halim says, I swear by the declining day that man is indeed loss. So when you read just this far, it should be should send shivers up your spine. Because it's talking about us. And it's not pleasant. We're in a state of loss. That's by default. But then the third ayah speaks of an exception. Illa, but not those who. So now you have to pay attention, right? This is the moment where we have to say, okay, I don't want to be in a state of loss, so let me listen 
to the exception. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except for those who... There are four things here. آمَنُوا Have faith. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And do righteous deeds. وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ And encourage each other in the path of haq truth, righteousness, reality, God, Tawheed, the Qur'an, they encourage each other. وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْ And they exhort or encourage each other, other to have patience and perseverance. So here are the translations. Except for those who have believed and done righteous deeds and advised each other to truth, and advised each other to patience. Accept such as have faith and do righteous deeds and join together in the mutual teaching of truth and of patience and constancy. You should already be getting the idea that if anybody thinks that the deen of Islam is about private devotion, isolated, from society, not bothered about you, you're not bothered about me, to each his own, you have to think again. Right? It's giving you a comprehensive understanding of your deen. And some of the Mufassirun have said, because other places in the Quran, you just have Iman. Or you just have Iman and righteous deeds. Like, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ إِنْ سُوَةَ الْتِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ so here they have said that you have something particular that's mentioned after the general. And it's already included in the general, in Iman and good deeds. But it's been mentioned exclusively afterwards because of its importance. That you may understand that to have Iman and good deeds includes a social responsibility. And when you engage in social responsibility, you will face opposition and resistance. And you have to be patient in the face of that opposition. It's that simple. And in other places in the Quran, this has been mentioned in different terms. Ya Bunaya in Surah Luqman. أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ وَأَمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنْهَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ There it's أَمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَهِي عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And enjoin what is good and forbid, forbid what is wrong. This is social responsibility. But you know what happens in that ayah afterwards? وَأَمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنْهَا عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا أَصَابَكِ But then be patient. Because you think you have fulfilled your obligation and then suddenly you face opposition and ridicule and then you give up and you start blaming others you say it's not for me what has happened to me well that's because that's the path that's the way things happen and who is it that faced more opposition than the prophets so at least a shadow of that those people will get who walk in their path so this is the surah. The other last two translations, Bikthal, no man is in a state of loss, save those who believe and do good works and exhort one another to truth and exhort one another to endurance. Because it's not easy to stay on the path. You have to endure. And Abdul Halim says, I swear by the declining day that man is in deep loss, except for those who believe and do good deeds, urge one another to the truth and urge one another to steadfastness. So that's the idea in the surah. Um, there's a couple of ahadith that need to be mentioned here. One is the one that says, speaks about degrees of Iman in relation to 
social responsibility. Man yara minkum munkaran. It's just a reminder, I'm sure all of you know this. Whosoever amongst you sees something that is wrong, witnesses something that is abhorrent. Fal yughayyirhu biyadi. You should repel it, change it. Fal yughayyirhu biyadi. Actively. With your hands. You have to engage in this. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِ And if you are unable to, there may be a sort of incapacity. You might have some prudence. You, know, you don't have to be reckless. Then at least speak out. If you are unable to do it actively, فَبِلِسَانِ Then at least speak out with your tongue. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِ At least acknowledge it as wrong in your heart. Don't reconcile with it. That it's none of my business. That's what they're doing. That's what's happening outside. I have nothing to do with it. I'm content. I'm happy. I'm not bothered. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِ وَذَٰلِكَ أَضْعَفُ الْإِيمَانِ And this is أضعف The lowest or the weakest point of faith. When you don't have the strength or the capacity or the ability. We are the Muslim Ummah. And when we were made the Muslim Ummah, كَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا And there's interesting interpretations of this wasat, the middle. But we were made, it's another topic, this middle nation. A just nation. لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ The purpose of us existing in the form of a community is that we would bear witness unto humanity that this is divine guidance. This is how it's done. This is how people are supposed to live. This is the path to prosperity, to success. To happiness. And that the messenger would be a witness unto you. And he was. He said this in his last Hajj. Allah have I not borne witness? And they all said, Yes, we bear witness. You have. You've delivered the message. So then the one who is present should take what I have given to those who are absent. And we are bearers of that message. And we have social responsibility. You can't neglect it. And so the take-home lesson, be involved in your community. The Muslim community. And the larger community that, that Muslim, the Muslims are in. Don't isolate yourselves. And it's not easy. That's not the easy way. The easy way is to mind your own business, keep doing what you're doing, you're well established, you have nice positions, you have a nice salary coming in. Don't rock the boat. No, this message rocks the boat. Don't feel secure. Do people think that they can say we believe and then they will not be tested and tried? Everybody was tried before you. This is how it works. When you say I believe, enter the realm of examination and test and struggle. This is the sunnah of Allah. This is how it is done. You will be tested and examined. So, uh, don't forget that. There's another hadith, it's very interesting hadith, um, it's hadith Qudsi, in which there's this village where the people are unrighteous. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the angel, go and turn it over. Time has come. And the angel goes down 
And you know the story, but understand it again in this context. And an angel comes up back to Allah. And of course the angel knows this is... But still he does it. This is how Allah has created them and us. It says there is this one person in this village who has not disobeyed you for the twinkling of an eye. Not disobeyed you for the twinkling of an eye. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is reported to have said in this hadith, Turn the village over him first, and then everybody else. Because he saw, he witnessed what was happening around him. And even the face of his color didn't change by seeing the wrong acts. He had a social responsibility. In Akhirah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward his devotion how he chooses to reward it. That's something else. But the rules in this world are that if you have knowledge, if you have been given knowledge, if you have been given revelation, now you are responsible. And if you do not actively engage in trying to understand that, believe in it, act upon it, and in some way fulfill a social responsibility in the society around you, then if a punishment comes, it will overtake you and everybody else in this world. And as a way to safeguard yourselves, take on that responsibility. So here is Surah Al-Asr, the main theme of it. Now, try to understand it in light of the Surah that came before and after. It's Surah Al-Takathur and Al-Humaza. And at this point, I'm zeroing in, although not exclusively taking one meaning over another, but to think about this in light of the life of the people in Arabia, Asr time. Well, Asr. What did people do at Asr time? You're closing up shop. If you're a businessman or businesswoman, and both were there, at the end of the day, it's time to take account. How much did I make? What do I get to take home? Well, Asr. Inna insana lafi khusr. No, it's a loss. If you are unmindful of core principles, it's a loss. It doesn't matter how much you made. al haqum takathur The surah before it. This is Abdullah Yusuf Ali. The mutual rivalry for piling up the good things of this world diverts you from the more serious things until you visit the graves. It's a distraction. Piling up the good things of this world. And then you're gone. It's over. And the same thing with Humaza, the surah after it. Woe unto every scandal monger and backbiter. The one who gathers wealth. Jama'a malan wa'addada and counts it constantly. Well, asr. Whether you think of it as humanity doing this over the ages, or you think of it as mid-afternoon, the time when it comes to actually do the counting at the end of the day. Inna insana lafi khusr. It's a loss. Illa ladina amanu wa amilu salihat wa dawasa bil haq wa dawasa bil sab. Now you can understand. Why the companions used to recite this? Think about it. Where are we going after now? Back to work. You gotta go back to the accounting. Who's making how much? You make the right decisions. I could have, if I had done this, had a little bit more. Okay. That's not what's going to end up as profit at the end of the day. This could turn out any which way. It is a categorical statement. It's a loss unless you have the framework of Iman. And unless you are mindful of righteous deeds. And unless you are fulfilling a higher responsibility to those around you. 
and that you are steadfast in that path. That is the priority. So these three ayats, Surah Al-Asr, we hear them often, we recite them. And in such a concise way, the Qur'an has put forward an entire framework for understanding your deen, for establishing your priorities, and then for moving forward with that understanding. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us on the right path, to keep us mindful of his teachings, and to keep us attached to the core values of this deen, which are not very difficult to grasp. We forget them. And the idea of a Jum'ah, the idea of other gatherings that you may have to do dhikr of Allah, to remember Allah, is to keep those core values in mind. Because we forget. We're so overwhelmed by the world around us, uh, the messages that keep flooding in through so many different media and gadgets and even through our associations. We forget. And so we need this constant reminder. And one of the names of the Qur'an is a dhikr It's the reminder. Because we know deep down. بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا The human being sees deep down, really, what he's all about. لَوْ أَلْقَى Even though he made forward excuses. If you look deep, in, deep down inside, we can recognize certain truths. And the no, Qur'an is there to remind us وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ الْذِكْرِ It's made easy. You know, there are certain ulum and there, are, there is specialized knowledge. And we need people to study deeply uh, the Qur'an and these ulum and these sciences to make sure that we don't violate certain parameters. But that doesn't mean that the ordinary person should feel like they can't approach these, these topics and they all have to be mediated. It has been made easy for a reason. It's supposed to appeal to everybody. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from among those who are mindful and who are <laughs> Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salam wa ala ibadihi al-lazhi mustafa Amma ba'd Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad Kama sallayt ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim Inna ka hamidu majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاصرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار عباد الله اتقوا الله يرحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكر الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون فاتوا السلام